Welcome to our Claritas Depositions podcast. My name is Ray Haddad, Director of Customer Success at Stenograph, and with me is the Director of Claritas Depositions, Katie Ochital. Hi, Katie. Hi, Ray. Thanks so much for having me. To help our audience better understand, what is your background in this industry, Katie? So I've worked in the deposition industry for about 20 years now. I kind of got into it by accident. When I was a kid, my dad, who is a civil litigator, used to take me to depositions with him if I didn't have school or if I was unattended. So I spent a lot of time in a court reporting office. And when I was old enough to work, that kind of turned into me getting a job there doing basic office tasks, which I then eventually turned into a career working my way through the various departments of an agency, you know, scheduling, production, operations. I actually even went to court reporting school about 10 years ago. Uh, I realized that all of the best reporters really loved it and they were really passionate about the craft and it just wasn't for me. So I decided to stay on this side of the business and work at various agencies. And now here I am with Claritas Depositions, which is a startup. Uh, interested in the future of depositions and how they can be modernized and how we can bring in more technology. That's really amazing. And I have to say, I know quite a few people who have uh, gone the path of attending court reporting school and then not completing it. And it really is a challenge. It's really tough. I admire everyone who does it, but it actually was a great investment in my own career. I got so much more understanding of how court reporters are taught, you know, the skill that really goes into it and knowing what they were experiencing versus what I was dealing with in an office was really helpful. Yeah. Being able to write at that speed is a extraordinary skill to develop and really is an art form. Yeah. It's wild. (laughs) It's not something that I think I could do and I've played piano. So (laughs) yeah. Common misconception. People say that, oh, I play the piano. I'll be good at it. But it's just so different. Um, I did play the piano as a kid. I also cannot do that anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Katie, you mentioned that Claritas is a startup. And I'm curious, when it comes to the court reporting industry, what's the need for Claritas in this area? You know, I think the court reporting industry and the deposition industry has gotten a bit too complicated in recent years. I think a lot has changed in litigation. And I think from the very beginning of the experience you're having with a client where you're describing your services, how they're going to pay their invoices, what kind of experience they're going to have a deposition, it's gotten very inundated with a lot of different options, a lot of different line items. What we wanted to do is come in and kind of unweave that web start to simplify the process as the future of depositions changes. We can't talk about the deposition industry without addressing supply and demand, which is a big conversation that court reporting agencies across the board are having. Um, There's definitely people out there that don't think there's a shortage of court reporters, but I think you would be hard pressed to find an attorney that hasn't at some point in recent years been told, I'm sorry, we don't have anyone available. So what Claritas wanted to do was start to build out digital reporting in the same way that we've spent years with stenographic reporting, you know, putting the same metrics in place, the same quality, the same type of training and control so that that can also be a viable resource within the industry for attorneys who have really said, hey, we need more help. I think it was the uh, NCRA's own 2014 report that identified that there was a dramatic shortage coming to the industry and yeah and and we as agencies probably didn't do enough about it then you know all of us should have addressed that need then and unfortunately not enough was done there wasn't enough uh, promotion of the profession unfortunately so many schools have closed there really just hasn't been the focus on the art of stenography and now we're trying to clean up that mess, right? And I think one of the ways to do that is, yes, there's still a place for stenography in this market. It's still absolutely necessary. There are still a need for it. Every court reporter I know is very busy, 
But I think we can introduce something new to offset that demand and to say to our attorneys, you know, this is also a viable solution. This is just another way that we can get you a certified record. Yeah. And I love how you framed it like that. It's another path to the same end and very much in line with what voice writers have been trying to promote for many years, that when it comes to getting that final certified transcript, there are many paths to it. And we want to accommodate the industry. And really, it's an access to justice piece. How can we best serve justice by providing that accurate record? Yeah, absolutely. Because I know that there are courts throughout the country that are struggling to be able to provide court reporters in various types of proceedings, not just depositions. And that means that someone's case is delayed, or perhaps they're not getting a record. And that's not fair, for, for lack of a better way to say it. You know, people should have equal representation. And that part of that means having access to these types of services, not just to attorney representation, but to vendors like ours, there need to be enough of us to be able to come in and say, yes, we can fulfill that need for your case. Absolutely. And I loved what you were talking about uh, initially when it came to really simplifying that billing structure. It's something that I've heard across the legal industry, whether it's the uh, flat fee services that attorneys have been adopting to meet that need. When it comes to Claritas, what are some of your largest distinguishing characteristics? So one of the biggest things that we're promoting is an all remote deposition model. We want to keep what has been in place for the past few years during the pandemic and have legal proceedings take place online. Um, while I understand there's so many people who want to go back to in person, we want to stay remote so that we have more access and further reach. Um, we also only offer digital reporting. So if a client does want a steno reporter, we're happy to refer them to one of our friends and family in the industry, but we only offer digital reporting. And then perhaps what our biggest differentiator is, is that we don't bill per page, which is traditional in the court reporting space. We actually bill by the hour for whatever package our attorneys select. Each package coming with a variety of services, rough, real time, final transcript video, you know, we have a few different options attorneys can choose from because they bill their clients by the hour. They pay by the hour, experts charge by the hour, you know, even videographers bill by the hour. So why have one person in the room who doesn't? You know, we wanted to have that continuity across the board. So it's much easier for an attorney to say to their client, hey, this is how many hours I think this case might take me. This is probably what we're going to spend versus my deposition is going to be three hours, but it could be 100 pages. It could be 200 pages. You know, I don't really know. And I think time is a much easier measurable unit for most people. That billing structure really is a large shift. And it makes a lot of sense because when it comes to that per page rate, you don't know how fast that witness is going to be speaking. <laughs> right. Or not speaking. How much dead time do you have? <laughs> true. Absolutely true. It really sounds like we've spoken a little bit already about how the industry is shifting and changing. What other large changes have you seen that help support Claritas and the need for this new model? I think one surprising change that a lot of people might be interested to hear or shocked to hear even is that there are steno reporters making the transition to digital reporting. Um, instead of them transcribing themselves, they're relying on technology, on automatic speech recognition. And then they're obviously still in the deposition, monitoring the proceeding, certifying those transcripts, swearing in the witness. But they're taking some of that pressure off of themselves in the moment and allowing the technology to help them with that. And then they're still handling the editing and turning in a certified transcript the way they always had. Um, but I think people don't want to believe that that's happening, uh, but it is. Uh, I think it can extend the career of a stenographer. I think it can allow stenographers to perhaps take on more work if they want to or take on less. People want to take on less work most days, right? Um, so I, I think that is a pretty significant shift in the industry that people are surprised by, perhaps not ready for. 
It's absolutely something that I've heard from multiple sources in the industry. And moreover, when you're talking about the ability to produce that stenographic record and just the quality and speed you need to be able to write at, it can be a challenge as people progress in their careers to maintain that high level of performance. So I really do view it as an accessibility piece, allowing people who want to stay in the industry to remain doing the job that they love. Absolutely. And they don't have to do it every time. Perhaps a certain deposition they want to handle with a digital capture, maybe another one they want to handle stenographically. But I think it would be great if all stenographic reporters understood how this technology worked for themselves, really researched it, really learned it, saw what it could perhaps do for them, and then made that decision to say, you know, yeah, I'm going to lean on technology today, or no, I think I'm going to do it the traditional way. And that really is one of the uh, core benefits of our digital reporting tool, MaxScribe. It's built off of what many stenographers have found to be the best solution, which is Case Catalyst. They're almost identical in terms of interface, and those who do make that transition, whether it's from uh, their court reporting school over to digital or otherwise, they recognize the system and they're able to very quickly learn the slight nuanced differences between them. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons that we were happy partnering with Stenograph and utilizing MaxScribe and your other services because we do have reporters familiar, obviously, with your product already who could quite easily make that transition. And we know of reporters who are in traditional stenographic court reporting school, but at the same time are learning digital capture. And they can now learn both with a very similar product. And there's not as much differentiation between the two learning paths for them. You know, it's more bang for their buck, so to speak. They, they gain those skills much quicker when they're utilizing a program that has very small differences between the two services. It also sounds like a great way to pay for school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, and you're getting real life experience. You're actually in depositions and understanding how they work perhaps in a digital capacity might feel more comfortable than being straight out of the gate out of steno school in your first deposition. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent point. So we've spoken a little bit about the benefits of Claritas and why you chose MaxScribe, but really Stenograph and Claritas have partnered across the board for the delivery of services. Um, one of the other solutions you've chosen is our remote testimony platform, Case Testify, which we've white labeled and are, we're showcasing here, the Claritas Capture platform. Yeah, I love this platform for the two-ish years of the pandemic. What I did most days was teach attorneys, witnesses, reporters, how to use an online platform, how to feel comfortable presenting documents, how to do everything from home remotely the way that we all had to. The reason this program is so great is because to me, it most closely replicates what you would experience if you were in an in-person deposition. Um, it pulls in CaseViewNet to see that streaming real time, a website that I'd say what 90% of attorneys have seen before. It doesn't look any different. So there's no hesitation to adopt it because they've seen it before. It's just perhaps in a different place on their screen. Um, the exhibit presentation is easy. It's quite easy to just upload things on the fly. So I think that it's the best way an attorney can have that same experience, but it also has permission-based access. You know, it has those security controls that we need in a remote deposition. And I really couldn't have said it any better myself. The platform's really gone through an iterative process where we take feedback from users, whether it be the reporters in a proceeding, the videographers, or the end users, the witnesses and attorneys attending that deposition or taking that deposition in order to make this platform exactly what they need for their remote depositions. Yeah, your team is great with all the feedback that we've provided. I think it's really helpful that you give everyone um, a customer success manager specifically that we can go to to say, we like this, we want this, we need X, Y, Z. Can you update this? That sort of thing. It's been really helpful. Our, our team, we want to be here to ensure that these remote proceedings go off without a hitch. 
Ultimately, our goal is for there never to be a delay in a deposition, at the very least on the technology end. <laughs> so if you could just learn how to control the weather, then you'll have done it all. Because that is the one place that we've had delays. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what would you say is the outlook for Claritas or the some of the goals or objectives that you have for this year? So we want to really focus on the quality of digital reporters and transcriptionists who are coming into this industry, or perhaps some who have been working in this industry for a few years, but there perhaps hasn't been enough quality control in this space. Um, digital reporting in its infancy was kind of built out of need, and there probably was a lot of just throw someone in the room, hit record, hope it goes well. And that is a awful way to conduct a deposition. And you've heard all of those bad stories about where it's gone wrong and things weren't recorded and things were lost. And so we're focusing a lot this year on making sure that our digital reporters and our transcriptionists are held to the exact same high standards that stenographers, their scopists, their editors, those same teams of people are held to the same ethical standards, the same quality control, making sure that people are working within their certifications, they're working where their testimony, you know, they're taking testimony that's admissible, they're not taking testimony where they shouldn't be. So we kind of want to blaze that trail in this industry where perhaps it hasn't really been considered before. Specifically, I, I love how you were highlighting the need for quality. And that's something that our team always tries to drive, particularly on the Mac Scribe training piece. Uh, we always want to promote how to use the tool, what those best practices are, and most importantly, the difference from just putting someone in a room and recording it to utilizing a tool built for capture. Yeah, absolutely. And a part of that is that person also needs to understand how a deposition works, who the players are, what is your transcript, where is it in the litigation life cycle? So what is your end product? Where does it go? Who's reading it? Who's looking at it? Why is it important? And I think in the past, we've had a lot of digital reporters and steno reporters for that matter, who perhaps weren't as invested in the process. And so we want to make sure that people who are coming into this industry and who are working for us and working for others have all the knowledge they need both on a technology side but also have an understanding of the legal process and know how what they're doing is going to impact all of these other people and how do you see the industry responding uh, to this kind of push i think attorneys are ready for it i think that firms are embracing more technology I think part of that conversation and one that we've seen in the industry a lot is about artificial intelligence and how it is filtering into the legal process and what's ethical and how should it be used responsibly. I think we want to focus more on technology as augmented intelligence and how it can help the human beings in this space, because there will always be human beings here how that technology can help you do your job faster, more efficiently, with clearer billing practices, because I think those are things that law firms are really craving. I think they want to uncomplicate this as well. And not just depositions, I think in review and discovery, I think the technology really has a chance to come in and kind of clean it up and make it clearer and faster and better. And as younger, attorneys come into the industry, you know, out of law school, they're demanding that. So, you know, we want to be ready to provide that. And I really appreciate how you said uh, augmented intelligence and the fact that there is a need to have someone there. That guardianship of the record is so critical. And I, I almost feel that's what most people miss. There has to be that human component to ensure that that record is accurately captured and that a quality and unbiased deposition or legal proceeding can take place. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If it was, if I was being deposed or if it was my case, I would absolutely want to make sure that there was a person there 
who is a guardian of that record or who is responsible for its accuracy, for the fact that it was taken down start to finish the way that it was supposed to be, that it didn't include things that it's not supposed to include, like off the record conversations, you know, that's where you still need a human component in this industry and always will. I just think the human will start to use more and more technology tools as this industry develops. I really couldn't agree more. Before we close out, do you have any other messages that you want to promote or anything that you want to share with the audience? I think a lot of my audience and a lot of people I know in this industry perhaps don't like that we are a company who is promoting exclusively digital reporting. There's obviously been stenographic reporters for as long as there has been recorded history. Someone was recording it. And I think it's daunting to think about technology coming in and changing that. But I want people to understand that Claritas isn't looking to replace anybody. We're just looking to offer a solution to a lot of the holes in the industry and to do that with the people we already know and love with the technology that can help that process along the way. Fantastic. Well, with that, thank you so much, Katie. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, and absolutely. And if uh, anybody wants to reach out to you and schedule a remote deposition, uh, what's the best way for them to reach out to Claritas Depositions? So our general uh, email line is info at claritasdepositions.com. And then depending what you need, we'll point you in the right direction. I can also be reached directly at kochital at claritasdepositions.com. All right. Thank you so much, Katie. Thanks, Ray.